How are we going everybody? Now, I did a live feed earlier on, on this little tool here. This is called a refractometer, or refract, re refractometer, whichever way you want to say it. Now, it measures the sugar levels or the nutrient levels in your plants. And from an array of plants, it's the liquids, in fact, that it takes a measurement from. It's a real simple unit to, unit to use, and it helps understand whether your soil has got enough um, life in it so your plant can become self reliant, meaning it doesn't need insecticides or fungicides. Get your, name, get your head around it, get the name known to yourself so you can get used to saying it and understand what it does because I'm going to be using this quite a lot uh, in the future as far as researching my soil and the plants. Now what I've done here is brought some leaves from the tomatoes. I've got some tomato leaves here. These are from the plants that don't have the extended pot on top of them which has covered the extra stem to create more roots whereas these ones here do. So automatically when you compare the two you can see the darkness difference this is just by adding that extra pot of soil or compost that we've had and superfood so this has got superfood and compost extra this hasn't yet now we're going to test and this is the stem of it so that's the best part of it which is the new growth so that's not bad but the bottom leaves aren't doing too well we're going to test this in the refractometer i struggle to say it to be honest with you uh, and what you need to do is get yourself a garlic crusher garlic crusher like this here and we add some leaves in there so we can extract the juice from it so I'm going to take this stem here and also if I can mention that the same plant I applied some eco butcher biostimulant and I foliar fed them so I can test those leaves as well these were picked before I applied the actual uh, eco butch on them and we're going to harvest the leaf afterwards and test it and see if there's any difference in the bricks measurement and that's the, the term they use when it comes to measuring the, um, the uh, sugar content, I suppose, or the density of this food. So now we've got one leaf in here. We're going to squeeze it on. Hopefully there's juice in this that we can get out of it. Yep, there we are. One more drop. Come on. Can you give me one? That's okay. We just drop the lid over the top. Smudges all over that plate. And I'll have a quick look in here and see what's going on. So this is the new growth. And this is sitting at 10. My poor eyesight. Can you see that in there? If you can't see it, I'll take a photo of it for you. You can't see it, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a photo of this and share it with you now. Here we are. Now, it normally turns white. What you're looking at there, see that, can you see that? Is that the right angle for you? Okay, so you can see the discoloration there. So it's stopping around eight or nine, just below the 10. So on the bricksometer or bricks meter, I've got a little chart here as well that'll give us the bricks chart measurements. So for tomatoes, if we go down here, and this is available on our website as well. I'll turn it around if you need that. So a poor performing tomato, a poor performing tomato is at four. Average tomato is at six. We're sitting around nine. So we're a good to excellent there. Now we're gonna test the other one. Let me just put this aside. So between the testing, I'm gonna use this little drill here, a screwdriver, just get rid of the greens. It needs a little rinse, so I'm just scraping this out because it's turned to muck inside. Give it a little rinse inside there. Get rid of all the excess moisture in it and the light dampening off with a fresh tea towel or something similar. All right, so let's do this one now. Now, you need to calibrate this when you first get it and it's using distilled water or boil up some water and then drop a couple of drops on the test plate here when you go looking through it, you'll have a clear uh, line between or a separation between the white area and the blue area. And the connection point between the white and blue, that's the measuring line that you mark against the zero on the scale there. So you calibrate it to zero between where the white and blue meet. And you do that by calibrating it, uh, taking off this little cap. And there's a little screw in there with a little screwdriver and adjust it positive or negative to bring it to zero. So once it's sitting at zero, it's ready to go. So now we're just going to give this another wipe down like this. Actually, I should have one wet rag. That's it, and there, and then dry it off. It needs, needs to be dry and clean before you go to the next one. All right, let's squeeze this one. This is from, these plants are super, super. Jesus, they haven't got any juice on them at all. There we are. I mean, they're super strong, these plants. I don't know why they're not releasing juice. There we are. We'll just get it to spread around everywhere. All right, give me a second to have a look. This is the moment. <laughs> it 
that all right? Five. No, it's not five. <laughs> it's actually nine. I was expecting it to be a bit higher than that. So I'm going to try another leaf. Okay, got a nice amount of dropping on there. Give it a second, make sure this lens is centered. And we are sitting lower than the one earlier. So this is sitting about seven folks. The one earlier did about nine. That's a bit confusing. So what we're measuring here, the bricks meter or measurement, is the, the nutrient density. And the higher the number, the healthier the plants, I suppose, and the more resilient they are to getting disease, attacked by disease and insects. So your aim is to create, create enough microbial activity in the soil so that the plants can thrive. Now, come here for a second. I'm confused about this part because I'm trying to compare the difference between these plants, which are looking mighty healthy, you can see there. There's a few tomatoes on here. Then, I mean, they're big, the big malacas, or I think they're Italian malacas as well, but this isn't a big malacca. That's a completely different one. Now, they haven't got a lot of tomatoes on, and, and by nature, they don't produce a lot of tomatoes. But if I compare it to these ones here, which are a little bit more sparse looking and lighter in color, well, look at that one there. It's just clusters, they're hanging like grapes, even though it's slightly yellow in color. So that's got a higher bricks reading than those ones do. So these are lighter in color. Last thing we're gonna test is this one here that we applied some EK Butch on it. So let me quickly grab a leaf and we'll test that one as well. Now this one here that I'm picking off a leaf that I sprayed with uh, EK Butch now had a reading of nine. That one over there had a reading of seven. And this one that I'm referring to, I haven't tested at all, but I would put this in the same class as this tomato here. So they're both performing similar to each other. And now I'm going to take a sample of this leaf. I'm just going to take this leaf off, which has got or had EK Butch on it. All right. And one thing I should mention, folks, is that I've never done this before. So I haven't worked with a fractometer. Oh, is that how you pre refractometer? So the refraction of light and measuring the sugar content. So this is my first time. Look, I've known about this. It's been around for years. And this is the first time I'm trialing it. And as you can see, the results are not what I'm expecting to see. And it really, the science behind it needs to be considered when it comes to gardening. Because you can get it right. If Look, if you're succeeding all the time every day of the year, you know, with what you do in your garden, you know, these are just ideas that maybe you can sort of help enhance your abilities on it. But at the end of the day, if you're having struggles in your garden and you're not sure where to look or what to do, well, you start with your pH. That's our four-in-one soil um, survey instrument. And then you go into the uh, refractometer to test the uh, nutrient density. Look at that, beautiful. All right. So we had a nine reading. I'd expect it to jump up to 10, 11, 12, if I'm lucky, after 20 minutes. Depends on which, you know what? It depends which way, they, they, actually, that's correct. It's sitting at 10 now, so it's gone up one notch. I could take a photo of it. Give me a second. And you might say, where are we? Here we go. What am I doing? Is it a 10? Is that 10 or 9 again? It's sort of hovering. Well, it's probably 9 again too, so it really hasn't moved that much. But I'd say, what do you reckon? At the end of the day, Whatever it is, it's working on those plants. So I've got to go back and now analyze what I've done to those and improve the soil content or the micro, micro, micro flora content in the soil to enhance the plant's ability to defend itself. So the higher the rating, the better health the plant is. And it's not just tomatoes, folks. You got eggplants. See, I've got these two eggplants here. All right. And I should test them to totally different plants. You can see the colors are different. The last test before we go, these two. All right, we're gonna start off with a lighter color eggplant. Both these have had no extra treatment. They've both had the same soil preparation prior to being planted. And they're right beside each other, all well, about half a meter apart. So this is the lighter one. Let's give this a go. Let's hope there's juice in this. Yes, there is. I'm gonna put the cover plate on. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
Oh, okay, that's sitting. Now, that's going to have a different measurement, uh, bricks measurement to eggplant, uh, to tomatoes. So, uh, I haven't got my glasses. Do you see eggplant here? Unfortunately, there's no eggplant here on the chart, folks. So I'm going to do a little bit of research afterwards and put it online for you to know what it should be from poor, moderate to excellent. But as far as the reading, we're going to compare one and the other. Here, we're sitting at four, four, just under five. And is that a bad thing? Well, let's have a look at the lowest numbers here. The lowest numbers are sitting around four. Everything should sit around averagely, averaging. So we've got broccoli here at four, six, carrots are six. So the, the, the higher the number doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a high, high number, but let's compare the light green to the dark green eggplant and see if there is a difference. One drop is all we get. Okay, we'll work with that. Let's have a look. Well, there we are. That's sitting at six. So the light green leaf was at four. This is sitting at six at the moment. So that darker green leaf on the eggplant obviously is a healthier plant by comparison. It does work, folks, and obviously well, I was about to say the theory of my old tradition is the darker the leaf, the healthier the plant. Maybe not so with the uh, tomatoes, because they're super dark. They've got lots of tomatoes on them, but nowhere near as many as these ones, and they're a lighter colour. Although they look, yeah, look, the, the, I reckon, honestly, I reckon it's a sliding scale. You can't have the perfect environment when it comes to microflora and life in the soil. There's so many different combinations, billions upon trillions of combinations of microflora that live within the root zone of the plant and all the other stuff that goes on as well. So they're doing well. Dark green, light green, I don't think makes a huge difference. It's measuring it properly scientifically. And this refractometer or refractometer, if you like to call it that way, I reckon it's a gem and I reckon every household should have one um, because the pH is what we've been testing all along and we're moving away from pH as far as understanding the nitrogen, phosphorus and potash in the soil but understanding the microflora and populating that. So we're going to be doing pH testing just to check the initial nitrogen levels only for that so we can bring them down if we need to and then we test them with this little unit here to do the bricks test and see how the plants go and then you can make adjustments so the higher the reading the more tolerant the plant is to being attacked from attack being attacked from insects and disease so you don't have to spray that's the whole purpose of this when we grow our own because if you're going to go into the insecticidal sprays and fungicide sprays chemical based you may as well just buy your stuff from a local supermarket and our next test will be with actual fruit and, and produce and tomatoes and things like that. Grapes, for example, we can measure the sugar content so we know exactly when to harvest them and whether they need any more help or not. These are all available on our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Uh, these are on sale as well as everything else. Superfood, we're going to touch base on superfood. All our uh, participants have received, uh, along with all the other orders. Thank you very much for the wonderful support. If you haven't got your superfood, it's still discounted below wholesale prices. So you can pay, purchase some and troll it out at home your own. There's a fertilizer and a palletized ver a version of it all. Check it out on vasiliesgarden.com. Until tomorrow, from me, Vasily, Maresi. Thank you.